When the materials you use when working on a project have something to do with the meaning of that project, whether you're asking a question or telling a story, often those materials, because they already have something in common with the subject, will help point out answers and share that story. And the process of working with those materials might even bring up new questions and observations. I'm Ellen Heck. I'm the author and illustrator of the book, Sunflower Seeds, which tells the story of a kindergarten class as they plant sunflower seeds and watch them grow. It's told from the perspective of a boy who notices things, and we get to follow this growth cycle with him. Because so much of the magic in this story comes from paying attention, from looking closely at things at different angles and noticing changes, I wanted the illustrations in this book to offer those discoveries to readers who are also looking closely. So, for the paintings in this book, I chose to use oil paint on brown paper for two main reasons. First, I wanted us to be able to zoom in, as the students do with their magnifying glasses, to be able to see something new inside the exact same painting, just because of a change in scale. With oil paint, you're able to see how a bumblebee from a distance can be made from a mush of abstract, goopy brushstrokes. How those brushstrokes have all different colors mixed in, and how highlights and shadows fall on different thicknesses and directions of real paint. Second, oil and paper are art materials that are similar in texture to sunflower seeds. The paint is oily like the kernels you eat that can make sun butter, and in contrast, it's surrounded by a dry, absorbent paper, like the seed coat. I chose a cardboard color for the paper because it allows me to use the paint for both the darkest darks and lightest lights, the deep purples and yellow highlights, and also to use the paper itself as an important storytelling color. While making this book, I looked to artists from the past who had also painted with oil on paper and also painted sunflowers. I watched our own sunflowers grow, and I read nonfiction books about sunflowers. In this research phase, I noticed three things in particular that I wanted to keep in mind while making sunflower seeds. One, a careful accounting of the way numbers and math can be hidden in the structures of plants and paintings and books. Two, the way that paint strokes themselves, their direction and thickness and movement can add meaning to a composition. And three, the cooperative roles of good and bad luck in the unfolding of a story or positive and negative space in the arrangement of a picture. So I'll talk a little bit more about each of those ideas and how they weave in and out of sunflower seeds. Guiding Geometry. In the opening end pages of Sunflower Seeds, we get a peek at some of the projects the kids in Miss B's class have been doing, and one of them is this Spirals in Nature art project. They've been looking at ways this swirling shape shows up in the world around us, from big things like galaxies and storms to smaller things like pine cones, shells, and sunflowers. They've even been making these spirals with squares of cut out paper. Because sunflowers are famous for arranging their seeds in Fibonacci spirals, each floret emerging at a golden angle from the one before, I decided to structure the paintings for this story along golden rectangles. You can really see it here and here and here. Circles are used to zoom in, and this angle divides the space in several places throughout the book. On some pages, you can even still see the lines of the underlying rectangle left over from the sketch. My favorite of these is this highlight on the angle of Miss B's nose that happened to line up perfectly with my mathematical guide. Directional paint strokes. The impressionist artist 
most famous for painting sunflowers is Vincent Van Gogh. The kids in Miss B's class have a Van Gogh poster on their wall, so I bet they've been talking about him too. In The Starry Night, Van Gogh's painting of a night sky over a village, the swirling movement in the atmosphere is made of thick, directional brushstrokes that swim like schools of fish in and around themselves, creating movement. Thinking of this, when change is happening in sunflower seeds, or an invisible thing is part of the illustration, like time passing, or the magic that can come out of a book, I would sometimes choose to show this with texture. Positive and negative space. Also on the opening end pages of Sunflower Seeds, we get to see another project the kids in Miss B's class have been doing. Creating shapes with both positive and negative space. This means making an image appear, for example, a hand, one way by painting the inside of that hand, the positive space, and then another way by painting the background around that hand, the negative space. Both methods allow us to see the hand. Two of my favorite artists, Toulouse-Lautrec and Edward Vuillard, would often use oil paint on brown paper or cardboard. I spent time looking closely at their work before making the illustrations for sunflower seeds because I knew I would be using the same materials as they had, and I wanted to find parts of their paintings that I particularly loved, figure out why, and then try to make that happen in sunflower seeds. One thing I noticed was that they often used negative space, not paint, but the paper itself surrounded by paint to make important shapes in their paintings. Here, in Lautrec's painting of Alfred Laguinia, this man is mostly made of paper surrounded by paint. And here, in Vuillard's Repast in a Garden, the chairs and table are cardboard colored, revealed by the negative space of the ground that itself is made by the paint and paper creating a texture together. Three places in sunflower seeds where negative space is doing storytelling work are here, where the shadows give us a clue about the seedlings being named Yoda, Kermit, and the Hulk. Here, where the negative space helps the deer appear and disappear as she wishes. And here, where the boy's head is being compared to the sunflower head, each one helping to outline the profile of the other. Thinking about positive and negative space makes a lot of sense for a book about sunflower seeds. Are they black with white stripes or white with black stripes? They're both. So throughout this book, you can find important shapes, people, plants, and patterns made with both positive and negative space.